um, my wonderful husband who played uh, the American consulate as well. Please come up. <laughs> Helga, please, please come on up, um, and let's uh, let's see if we have some questions. Helga, who wrote the screenplay? So uh, we also have Martin Lucas from Film and Media Studies at Hunter College. Cool. Just one more. Okay. Cool. Here we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Fine. I didn't quite finish. <laughs> So maybe we'll take a question or a comment from uh, Martin first, if you may, uh, and then we'll open it to q and We will probably have about 20-25 minutes or so. Okay. I guess the first question would be, you both uh, have a, a credit for the screenplay. You've worked together in some way, and it seems as though it was a very elegant way of working, and I wondered if you could speak a little bit about that process itself because it, you kind of play really on the edge of a kind of dark comedy but not quite getting over that edge and I, I think it's a very special uh, type of screenwriting. Um, thank you Martin. This is like a very difficult question, you know. <laughs> I think collaborations are generally uh, difficult and I don't know, you know, we experimented with it and there's a lot of Helga here and a lot of me, you know, in other ways. Uh, so um, it's an, I think that's an interesting combination and it's interesting, um, I thought about the tone a lot and uh, you know, in a lot, of the a lot of the ways it was an experiment in, uh, in general because I, I often refer to my husband who's like, oh, I read the screenplay and I imagined it in black and white. <laughs> like he's just some, something else and some, somehow I always saw it in a certain way and um, you know, put in this more like house music um, subculture elements there. So it was an interesting because Helga had her own 90s and also lived through this time, uh, but in a different way. Um, and a lot of it, I feel like, you know, of course, all the graceful, you know, all the graceful and elegant elements, they're all from Helga's, you know, Helga's being, you know, it was infused there. And that, you know, and I kept, like, the beautiful part about that collaboration was that as a director, as I came back to the screenplay, I kept finding them. I kept, she, she like, buried all these treasures for me to, to hunt for. That for me, you know, as we're working in the screenplay, we're not a parent, and so so I was like, oh my god, you know, this was a, this is like a, you know, a to total genius, <laughs> the, with the with the work of total genius. Um, it's first we um, we've heard this story from a friend of mine um, in 2008. I I have to say, as we actually traveled on a festival trip uh, for one of Helga's films, and we were, I think so, I think, but I'm not I'm not sure. I think that's how we met Olga, who uh, is based on a real story. Uh, I immediately was like, oh my god, this is, this is a film, I don't know how to make it. <laughs> um, and uh, when I was at Columbia MFA, which is uh, like very much uh, uh, a place I absolutely love and adore, um, in the screen training one, um, I started writing the script and I, and I have to say my draft was just horrible. <laughs> so I was like, Helga, please, please look at this, this, uh, this, is, uh, this might never be anything worthwhile, but uh, um, I'm grateful Hilga took it on and, and really like it really inspired kind of the, the, the making of the song. Hilga, pardon. It was such a detailed story. I have very little to add. <laughs> <think. laughs> um, yes, I guess I, I would just add that uh, uh, it is true, you know, we um, we have different experience in different places in 1990s. Uh, and Dari was younger at the time, um, and uh, I spent you know early 1990s um, in Moscow. Um, how, if something is wrong with this. Yes. Uh, that, um, so it was uh, it was quite a bit different, and at, at the same time, um, I got to know quite well the you know the world of secondhand uh, stores and you know removed labels uh, because this is where we had these big shipments from Germany, and this is how I dressed my first you know my sons <laughs> uh, that were born in um, 1991. 
and uh, t uh, this is this was the time when you know you could see uh, porcelain um, cups and, and crystal uh, crystal chandeliers you know hanging from the trees. Um, uh, so, so it was uh, it was a very intense and interesting time, uh, and I was trying to um, combine, you know, my experience with uh, something that I wanted to um, express in this film, uh, which is, you know, closer subject to her, because she was a DJ in New York. Um, you know, she was very much into house music, and I would like, you know, I wanted to, you know, to to incorporate these different experiences into the story. Um, which suggests that in fact, I mean this is a, in a way a historical document in, mm -hmm. in a certain kind of specific way. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you could speak to that because it is, I mean we're looking at something that was of a moment. We hear these lines uh, about there being no rules for instance and ideas about freedom that seem to kind of meet and ignite just at that time. I wondered if you could speak a little bit about that. Well, I think these ideas of freedom are still very much relevant, and that's why it, it played so well in Belarus. Um, it's interesting. I, uh, I wish I put an, a specific date on the, on the film, because for me, uh, as I started working through the material, it was easier to work through, like, okay, there's a time and place. Um, and for me, it was like a April 26, 1996. Um, and it was the first time that, um, you know, I experienced a, a violent political pro protest being, uh, being kind of ripped apart, like the government ripped through the, through the people. And so that's how this kind of, um, we, we had more of that story with, with Helga in the beginning and the end. And that's, at, you know, at the end, you now only see the, the um, you know, she sees a couple of people going to a bigger protest. And, um, but the audio is actually from a documentary footage. The audio is from from that date and and specific time. Um, just it was just interesting. I, I, I guess as I was look thinking ab about my experience, I realized that you know I was very much connected to what we were why why we were questioning should we stay or should we go and this eternal question of the relationship with your homeland uh, was also quite political. You know, it's not it's hard to be outside of politics even though it's a very it's a story. She's not. Uh, Battling with um, the government forces per se, you know, it's, it's like it's more like small town thinking, um, and the dramatic question kind of is uh, is along different different lines. Um, so so it emerged, you know, like of of course the time time was um, I felt like oh it was much more optimistic. Like these things right now, it's hard to imagine these things happening in Minsk right now. Um, and the, the country was on, uh, at a crossroads and, and there was a lot of optimism. It, it was like we felt like things could be possible that, that are maybe not possible right now. So I don't know, you know, like the historical document in that sense, in that sense for me was like very much represented that year 1996. And you know, it was quite sad that it was, um, I, had to ch I had to just say 90s and I had to cut that last scene for um, distribution in Belarus. Um, because that just they just found that like, it might cross the line. You know, we had the same president since 1994, um, and uh, we're constantly figuring out like, oh, where is that censorship line? But because it was about the 90s, it kind of saved the film from. Uh, it helped the film. You could you could make this film because you could argue, oh, this is the 90s before he came to power. So as long as you don't say 96, you're good. Uh, but for me, I was like, it's 96, you know, 90, like 94, things were different, you know, like, it, you know, we would probably tell the story differently. I feel like it could be more about, oh, there's nothing to eat, but the, there's still, like, it's still very hopeful, you know, it's a little bit better than, I think, like, 93, or at least what, um, how I interpreted the story. Um, so that's what, yeah, I had to pretend it was something else. And then, of course, there was all this criticism. It was like, it's not 92. I was like, well, in the mid-90s, it was already this way. And especially, of course, I, I really wanted her to be a part of the subculture, and it definitely developed closer to the mid-90s. But somehow, for us today, watching the film, there's still a kind of a space of hope in it, in an important way. I wondered if you could talk about how, how that comes 
Well, I think it comes out with uh, comes up with uh, the the last scene, you know, and the and the small and Kostya who leaves with her, right? You know, and, and we definitely we definitely thought about it um, as as a hopeful gesture. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to balance this with uh, stolen money from. <laughs> you know, I always try to. Uh, but she says she doesn't want the money, right? So, so it's, right. Yeah. Uh, so it has to be the right, you know, amount of uh, sort of, uh, of of different things. Um, but I don't. Um, uh, you know, it was actually a question at some point. You weren't sure you wanted to include this uh, political ending at all. Right. Uh, and, and I was missing it, really. Um, I, you know. Yeah. But why, why is it time and place? For me, it was just, you know, I personally lived through it, so, like, it just became so... It's, it's easier to, as a jumping off point, when you can imagine the time and place and the feeling, like, I could, I know what I felt that day. You know, that, that hopeful but loss of hope and, and the battling for but it's still possible but is it still possible is the freedom still possible is the freedom how we think about it is it even relevant yeah thank you if i may just ask because i forgot to mention that this was also the film nominated for the best uh best foreign film uh it wasn't nominated i, I i'm sorry it was <laughs> was a candidate. A Belarus yeah. sent it in as a candidate, it's yes, a for foreign language, as issue. well as uh, many other countries did. Um, there have there were five films nominated. We were not on that list, unfortunately, but I we were lucky to compete. I, I used the wrong term. That's what I meant. Uh, it was also playing in Paris just today, uh, well, with the time difference uh, a few hours ago, right? Uh, it's been also playing all over uh, Europe, yeah, we, did, we did something like 50 festivals or more, and we, we we've gotten a lot of awards. So yeah. I just want to ask if you've been uh, tracing or noticing any kind of reception paradigm across the different countries, and also across the uh, time period that it's been playing. It's a very new film, but nevertheless, uh, things are so rapidly changing nowadays that perhaps you have something to say about it. Well, I felt like um, there's a lot of gender in the film. It's quite gendered, the narrative. Um, but it, that uh, in Eastern Europe, that discussion wasn't picked up necessarily at all. Like a lot of reviewers or, you know, they were so... It's such a traumatic time for, for that part of the world, the 90s, that it was more of a vehicle to re-reflect and try to digest um, that time in a different way, possibly, because... I don't think this is like Brato Bratva, and it's it's a slight, it's a slightly different beast. Um, so they were focusing on that, um, but uh, you know, as I traveled to Europe, the, there was more. You know, they they were relating to it differently. For them, the '90s wasn't like they, you know, that didn't necessarily get the the historical context, but it didn't matter. You know, the idea that someone wants to leave their country and has an American dream was like a lot more universal as a way of connecting to, to the story, to his character. So I would say, you know, so I was amazed as how, you know, right now, we just this past weekend, we were in the youth competition in Austria, and we also got a youth jury in Ireland. So young people in, in Europe just like thought it was also their own story. Thank you. Questions? Students? So hot no here. student uh, questions. This is like a little <laughs> okay, so, yeah. yeah. okay. uh, большое спасибо. Thank you very much for the movie and for the restoration of that. <laughs> you know our habitat. I, I was there, not there in Ukraine, in Eastern Ukraine at that time. And for me personally, it was the best part of my life. But for a lot of people around me, it was the worst part of their life. It's my personal story. Doesn't matter. But thank you very much for recreation of that apartments, people, rock on the wall, psychology, when so easy from compassion to rape to after that uh, trying to dismiss that person, to опустить по-русски сказать, и публично это ментальность женщин, мужчин, это все, it's all coming back. Thank you very much. My question is, uh, was that, uh, that movie seen in Belarus? Yes, it was widely seen. Uh, it's right now very much available online as well in that whole region. Uh, we were in 
I don't know, 20 out of 22 movie theaters there for all of September in 2018, last year. Uh, so it, it got an amazing distribution and, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't expect it. I think the distributor then we ended up working with, you know, they didn't have a precedent and in, in, in near, like just quite recently, we didn't have a Belarus film that could be that widely released. And so nobody knew what they were doing. <laughs> so we were trying things out and somehow they were all um, working. I feel like I feel like I was very lucky to to uh, to reach out to the audience. We uh, we surpassed our expectations in terms of like theater box office. Of course, it uh, it was uh, there's a lot of love and a lot of hate. I'm not gonna lie. I think they were like I didn't read that, but my parents did. And sometimes they would be like, oh, you know, and I was like, I don't know, I'm not involved. Um, but there was, uh, it's, um, I mean, for some people at this time, you know, they just, you just mentioned the 90s and I saw uh, some friends of friends who saw it at the premiere screening and, you know, they were walking out and they were crying. And it was like, you know, how could you do it? Or it's like way too much. It's way too much. Even though, you know, I find, I find this film is, you know, very <laughs> gentle. It's a very gentle, you know, it's not, it's not gruz dvesti, dvesti, da? It's, it's, it's not the, the you know, it's not the, you know, there's, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of hope there, okay? I don't, I don't find it like a, you know, I don't know if I could place it in the Chernuha as, as some, some would claim. So, so there was a, but there, so there's a lot of debate and actually, uh, Tanya Zamirovskaya, who is sitting in the front row, wrote mo probably one of my most like favorite reviews that I know Helga also really loves. <laughs> um, so you know, it's it's also the context. Like it, it needed um, it needed discussion, and that happened, um, and it was really exciting. It was exciting for people to go and you know, they they went and they saw a film about them, about the place where they lived. Minsk is often shot for Moscow, for many other cities, but not for Minsk. So it was like it was like oh my god you know there's something of ours that, that we can talk about you know all, of course all my friends who who went to the parties in the nineties they came out and they were quite disappointed because it's not it's not it doesn't fully reflect that that scene either so so every but everybody had their own little excitement um, and everybody was trying to guess who the main characters were based on so like that's another game I played with uh, with with my friends. <laughs> Hi. I think I have to hold it. Okay. Uh, also, thank you, um, Helga Daria. Thank you. I uh, left Minsk in 1990, so I missed all of that, but brought family members over, and my 17-year-old uh, cousin came in 96, so I think she was uh, living through that. I wanted to ask, uh, Daria, you said that uh, Helga's screenplay had like uh, had surprises for you or had treasures for you, and I was really curious because I saw so many amazing details in the film. Uh, I was curious, like some examples of that. Can you think of any? It's so hard to say. <sighs> I mean, the, what what you see on screen is also you know just the hard work of um, nothing that we would put on screen could look good unless it was from that time. A lot of these objects are actually uh, really uh, vintage objects and. I don't know why, uh, but something with the art department in Belarus, everything that they would make would just be like a, a, a sore. I would, like, I would come in and be like, e this cannot be in the frame. Like, it just didn't work. So it was an extra, extra hardship of like asking friends or friends, do you have anything from the time? Do you have a skirt? Do you have this? Um, it, it was really, really quite an ordeal. Because I always thought that Minsk was, um, you know, the time flows differently and always felt like he was stuck in time in some ways. But the, it's not true, you know. And for, for weeks after the shoot, I would just walk around and be like, new windows, new windows, new windows. Like, I could see, you know, that modern life, of course, took over. It's, it's not, we have the, some, some, uh, some idea that it's still stuck in the 90s, but it's, it's quite modern. But it's, um, I mean, it's uh, like... You know, I think people who see the film and uh, recognize the maturity and love the dialogue, I think these are the most, you know, being and like having that those moments of subtext where it works not even on two levels but on three levels. Like when he tells her, you know, you know, like you could see, you know, good actors playing it so, so, so well because it had, 
is he does he know is he trying to just play to the bride when he says here's your money or am I going to pay for your services right it's that line that that could play in so many different levels and you as an audience could choose your journey that you're going on does he is he paying for because you know she you know they had sex or is he just doing it to please the bride to please his now now his wife um, or are the are all these things working for you, which they are, right? So, so it's just something that, like you know, after the fifteenth time you you see that take, you're like, wow, it's still it keeps on giving because it's so potent. I found the use of dialects very interesting, and like the Belarusian subject that it made, the tone mm -hmm. very, very, um, it just was truthful in a way that it was used. But I also know that Fogopov doesn't speak Belarusian, and how much of that was in the uh, script, and how much was it something that the actors were then, and how much was it natural versus you know, natural? None of it is natural. All of them are actors and from Minsk. Um, so it was it was just a request I made and we worked on it and it's you know they all know friends who live in that area or they would bring in um, some phrase that a catchall phrase or um, um, they we would start to explore it we had some rehearsal periods that was nice it's primarily because they're you know most of uh, most of my friends speak Russian and I spoke Russian growing up but um, as you move away from the capital of course there is a um, there are all these dialects. Of course, um, you know, I wish I had more preparation so it would, the Trasyanka would be more precise, but to me it was like it sounded good. Um, so we added that in and added some of the, some of the dialect. Uh, that, yeah. What, uh, for example, there was the word потрясающе, um, but I love потрясающе so much more, <laughs> which wasn't something I wrote, you know, uh, but uh, the, um, uh, so this is where, you know, the actors and the work with actors, this is, you know, this is where it took the, um, the words that were there, but they weren't written this way, but they became so much more interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about the casting because this was an amazing actress like just to know how they this all come come about by chance <laughs> well, I had a relationship. I have. Um, I started the casting process pretty early, even before I had the funding for the film. I didn't know if it was going to come together, but it's uh, like just one of the key things that I thought that would. You know, I love working with actors. It's it's, it's actually it's just so exciting. Like they always bring something interesting. Um, I had a casting director in Moscow that uh, <laughs> would keep sending me ideas. Um, I think like b maybe for a year before uh, before we we, you know, really started, went into pre-production. Uh, and I also had another casting director in Minsk also attached to the project. And so all the, you know, we, we went through everybody there. I did several casting sessions in New York, and I think I saw some some women in Paris even, you know, obviously all from Eastern Europe. Um, so it, it, was, it was just like a meticulous um, and daunting process, really. Alina came on really late. Um, I have to say it was it was a heartbreaking situation where I had someone else um, that I, I like to say I, I got married to her because <laughs> you choose someone and you're like okay this is my person and we started working together and uh, but my casting director was she just just kept on me she's like I don't believe her I don't think you know it's like in the David Lynch movie this is the girl the it girl and it really was like this this the mystery is it the girl. <laughs> and then she'd call me up at night, she's like, this is not the girl. <laughs> and I was like, come on. And she's like, it's never too late to jump into the last uh, bandwagon. She kept saying that. Uh, and so she sent me Alina. Uh, and when she sent me Alina, some, I think, you know, and there was a self-tape where Alina was just uh, introducing herself and saying I'm such and such. And, and she said something, I'm not an actress, I'm an artist. And I, and I was like, okay, I love this girl. Who's <laughs> like, we've got to get her in. Um, so, so, you know, but of course she was in Switzerland or wherever, you know, she, she Alina is from Siberia, um, she's from Novosibirsk, um, she finished the MHT, 
um, you know, she's really, you know, has lovely training uh, and it was her first lead role. She was in another film before, she had a smaller role. I didn't know, I never saw the film, the film wasn't still in post-production, so it was nothing for me to see. I only saw what Alina was and, uh, but, you know, like I, sh we, we just were, just fell in love. It was like love from first sight. It was that type of situation where you're like, oh wow, I could work with her. Um, of course it was challenging because she came in, we had only two weeks together, um, and she also had a busy, busy schedule in Moscow, so we, like a lot of what, what ended up on screen is like what we were working on. We were working throughout the shooting process, like this is what the character we were creating. Um, and, you know, she was a workhorse, so like that helped, <laughs> you know, because she's like a lot of the times she's in every scene and the days were really long and I, you know, the, in throughout the shooting period, I think she, twice that she had to go to some Arkhangelsk, God knows where, to do a theater performance also, and, and you know, she would like go away, take lots of flights, like go perform and come back. You know, it's really, it's really intense when, when you go into a low budget film and how much you have to give. Maybe one more question from the student audience. Please. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a simple question, um, maybe not, I don't know. Seeing the movie now, do you think that there's anything that you don't like or like especially? Like, you know, the scene with the, um, him paying money is obviously mm -hmm. such a, like a, a huge scene, like you said, it keeps giving. Do you think there are other scenes that you wanted to make more like that or that ended up like that way inadvertently? Well, if I would go down that route, <laughs> down that route uh, you know, there would be no film. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, I... Um, I think every filmmaker has many things that they would like to explore or try again, but you know, unfortunately we have you know 22 shooting days and that's it, <laughs> and then you have to and then you have to edit it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, do I have any regrets? No, I'm quite happy with uh, with what what we have, what we've got. Um, there's no. I'm sure Hilde has more of these. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not the maker, uh, so I, I don't have any sense. Uh, no, what I what I told uh, Daria first when I saw the film, and which I, which actually um, was my favorite part about it, it, it was um, uh, the cast, and how incredibly um, close, you know, because she's using the documentary footage, and uh, I said that you know it's it's such a powerful thing that the people you chose. Uh, they merge with this, you know, crowd that was videotaped on the streets in 1990s. So, so the documentary is so not there anymore. Yes. Helga saw some documentary yeah. from 1996 that that, uh, that um, used to be a part of we the were film to and work in, into the the narrative. Right, but um, uh, so but this uh, you know like uh, it's called in Russian popadanias like the match. And uh, you know the ability to find this, you know these people, the faces, you know the clothes, the uh, the mimics. Um, uh, so true to time is very impressive, and this is my favorite part of of uh, what's happening. Thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap up, but let's thank.